Medical Ministry, Section 2 The Divine Plan in the Medical Missionary Work The Majesty of Heaven as a Medical Missionary This world has been visited by the Majesty of Heaven, the Son of God. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Christ came to this world as the expression of the very heart and mind and nature and character of God. He was the brightness of the Father's glory, the express image of His person. But He laid aside His royal robe and kingly crown and stepped down from His high command to take the place of a servant. He was rich, but for our sake, that we might have eternal riches, He became poor. He made the world, but so completely did He empty Himself that during His ministry He declared, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He came to this world, and stood among the beings he had created, as a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. A Servant of All Christ stood at the head of humanity in the garb of humanity. So full of sympathy and love was his attitude that the poorest was not afraid to come to him. He was kind to all, easily approached by the most lowly. He went from house to house healing the sick feeding the hungry, comforting the mourners, soothing the afflicted, speaking peace to the distressed. He took the little children in his arms and blessed them, and spoke words of hope and comfort to the weary mothers. With unfailing tenderness and gentleness, he met every form of human woe and affliction. Not for himself, but for others, did he labor. He was willing to humble himself to deny himself. He did not seek to distinguish himself. He was the servant of all. It was his meat and drink to be a comfort and a consolation to others, to gladden the sad and heavy-laden ones with whom he daily came in contact. An Expression of God's Love Christ stands before us as the pattern man, the great medical missionary an example for all who should come after. His love, pure and holy, blessed all who came within the sphere of its influence. His character was absolutely perfect, free from the slightest stain of sin. He came as an expression of the perfect love of God, not to crush, not to judge and condemn, but to heal every weak, defective character, to save men and women from Satan's power. He is the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of the human race. He gives to all the invitation, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Following in His Footsteps What, then, is the example that we are to set to the world? We are to do the same work that the great medical missionary undertook in our behalf. We are to follow the path of self-sacrifice trodden by Christ. As I see so many claiming to be medical missionaries, the representation of what Christ was on this earth flashes before me. As I think of how far short The workers today fall when compared with the divine example. My heart is bowed down with a sorrow that words cannot express. Will men and women ever do a work that bears the features and character of the great medical missionary? Is there not woe enough in this sin-stricken, sin-cursed earth to lead us to consecrate ourselves to the work of proclaiming the message that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life? This earth has been trodden by the Son of God. He came to bring men light and life, to set them free from the bondage of sin. He is coming again in power and great glory, to receive to himself those who during this life have followed in his footsteps. His name to be honored. Oh, how I long to see those who claim to be medical missionaries honoring the great exemplar whose life declares what is comprehended in the claim to be a medical missionary. I would that they were learning the Savior's meekness and lowliness. My heart aches to think that Christ is so greatly disappointed in his followers. They bear a name that their daily life does not give them the right to bear. We must be sanctified, soul and body, through the truth. Then we shall honor the name Medical Missionary. Oh, this name means so much. It calls for a representation altogether different from the representation given by many who bear it. Soon these will understand how far they have departed from the principles of heaven and how greatly they have grieved the heart of Christ. Understood through practice. When all our medical missionaries shall live the renewed life in Christ Jesus and shall take his words as meaning all that they are designed to mean, there will be a much clearer and more comprehensive understanding of what constitutes genuine medical missionary work. And yet, this line of work can best be understood by practicing it in simplicity. The unfolding of this work will have a deeper meaning to them after they obey the holy law engraven on tables of stone by the finger of God, including the Sabbath commandment concerning which Christ himself spoke through Moses to the children of Israel. Follow the Master God's servants who are doing genuine medical missionary work have a most solemn, sacred responsibility resting upon them to keep in view Christ's life of unselfish service. They should turn their eyes from everything else and look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith. He is the source of all light, the fountain of all heaven's blessings. To every medical missionary worker, I am instructed to say, Follow your leader. He is the way, the truth, the light, the life. He is the one whose example we as true medical missionaries must follow. In this age of diseased piety and perverted principle, those who are converted in life and practice will reveal a healthy and influential spirituality. Those who have a knowledge of the truth as it is revealed in God's Word must now come to the front. My brethren, God requires this of you. Every jot of your influence is now to be used on the right side. All are now to learn how to stand in defense of truth that is worthy of acceptance. Those who are endeavoring to live the Christ life must call things by the right name and stand in defense of the truth as it is in Jesus. Time to Advance It behooves every soul whose life is hid with Christ in God to come to the front now. Something is to be done. We are to contend most earnestly for the faith once delivered to the saints. The spirit in which truth is defended and the kingdom of God advanced must be as it would be if Christ were on this earth in person. If he were here, he would be drawn out to render a solemn rebuke to many who claim to be medical missionaries, but who have not chosen to heed the injunction he has urged upon them to learn of him his meekness and lowliness of heart. In the lives of some of those who occupy the highest positions, self has been exalted. Until such ones rid themselves of every desire to uplift self, they cannot clearly discern the character and glory of the great medical missionary. We are now to unify and, by true medical missionary work, prepare the way for our coming King. 
let us increase in a knowledge of the truth, and render all excellence and glory due to him who is one with the Father. Let us seek most earnestly for the heavenly anointing, the Holy Spirit. The Purpose of Christ's Humility There is too much of self and too little of Jesus in the ministry of all denominations. The Lord uses humble men to proclaim his messages. Had Christ come in the majesty of a king, with the pomp which attends the great men of earth, many would have accepted him. But Jesus of Nazareth did not dazzle the senses with a display of outward glory, and make this the foundation of their reverence. He came as a humble man, to be the teacher and exemplar as well as the redeemer of the race. Had he encouraged pomp, had he come followed by a retinue of the great men of earth, how could he have taught humility? How could he have presented such burning truths as in his sermon upon the mount? His example was such as he wished all his followers to imitate. Where would have been the hope of the lowly in life had he come in exaltation and dwelt as a king upon the earth? Jesus knew the needs of the world better than they themselves knew. He did not come as an angel, clothed with the panoply of heaven, but as a man. Yet, combined with his humility, was an inherent power and grandeur that awed men while they loved him. Although possessing such loveliness, such an unassuming appearance, he moved among them with the dignity and power of a heaven-born king. Disciples of Christ to Represent His Character The Savior lived on this earth a life that love for God will constrain every true believer in Christ to live. Following His example, in our medical missionary work we shall reveal to the world that our credentials are from above, that as representatives of the kingdom of heaven we are fulfilling the words of the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come. United with Christ in God, we shall reveal to the world that as God chose His Son to be His representative on the earth, even so has Christ chosen us to represent His character. Everyone who has genuine faith in Christ Jesus will represent Him in character. To Heights of Faith our medical missionary workers must rise to heights that can be reached only by a living, working faith. At this time in our history, the men at the head of the work are to allow no confusion of sentiment to prevail in regard to what should really be expected of medical missionaries sent of God. There should be a more clear, definite understanding of what medical missionary work comprehends. It must be defined as standing on an altogether higher plane and as accomplishing results of a much more sanctified order before God can endorse it as genuine. Those who desire to honor God will not mingle worldly policy plans with His plans in attempting to accomplish the results that this work is ordained of God to accomplish. Our work is clearly defined as the Father sent His only begotten Son into our world, even so Christ sends us, His disciples, as His medical missionary workers. In fulfilling this high and holy mission, we are to do the will of God. No one man's mind or judgment is to be our criterion of what constitutes genuine medical missionary work. True medical missionary work is of heavenly origin. It was not originated by any person who lives. But in connection with this work, we see so much which dishonors God that I am instructed to say, the medical missionary work is of divine origin and has a most glorious mission to fulfill. In all its bearings, it is to be in conformity with Christ's work. Those who are workers together with God will just as surely represent the character of Christ as Christ represented the character of His Father while in this world. Cleansed from Earthliness I am instructed to say that God will have the medical missionary work cleansed from the tarnish of earthliness 
and elevated to stand in its true position before the world. When schemes that imperil souls are brought into connection with this work, its influence is destroyed. This is why there have arisen in the carrying forward of medical missionary work many perplexities that demand our careful consideration. Nothing will help us more at this stage of our work than to understand and to fulfill the mission of the greatest medical missionary that ever trod the earth. Nothing will help us more than to realize how sacred is this kind of work and how perfectly it corresponds with the life work of the great missionary. The object of our mission is the same as the object of Christ's mission. Why did God send His Son to the fallen world? To make known and to demonstrate to mankind His love for them. Christ came as a Redeemer. Throughout his ministry, he was to keep prominent his mission to save sinners. God's purpose in committing to men and women the mission that he committed to Christ is to disentangle his followers from all worldly policy and to give them a work identical with the work that Christ did. The Source of Success the Lord has instructed us that all our sanitariums are to be conducted, not as if the success of the work done were due to the skill of the physicians, but because of the divine power connected with the physician. The great healer is to be magnified. It is to be represented that the favor of God is on the institution because the principles of health reform are respected and because Christ is acknowledged as the chief physician. Our sanitariums have been in the past and will continue to be, if rightly conducted, a means of blessing and uplifting to humanity. If the truth is rightly represented, those who patronize our sanitariums will learn much regarding its principles and many will be converted. These institutions have been represented to me as beacon lights showing forth the truth as it is in Jesus. The Lord Jesus is the great minister of healing, and His presence in our institutions has been a savor of life unto life. Christ came to the world as the great physician of mankind. Our sanitariums, wherever they are established, should be made educational forces. The Lord would be pleased to have you with chosen helpers build up your work to do a more special work in religious lines. Wonderful has been the working out of God's plan in the establishment of so many health institutions. Intemperance of every kind is taking the world captive, and those who are true educators at this time, those who instruct along the lines of self-denial and self-sacrifice, will have their reward. Now is our time. Now is our opportunity to do a blessed work. Types of God's Saving Power In our medical institutions, the people are to be brought in contact with the special truths for this time. God says there shall be institutions established under the supervision of men who have been healed through a belief in God's Word and who have overcome their defects of character. In the world, all kinds of provision have been made for the relief of suffering humanity, but the truth in its simplicity is to be brought to these suffering ones through the agency of men and women who are loyal to the commandments of God. Sanitariums are to be established all through our world and managed by a people who are in harmony with God's laws a people who will cooperate with God in advocating the truth that determines the case of every soul for whom Christ died. All the light of the past, which shines unto the present and reaches forth into the future, as revealed in the Word of God, is for every soul who comes to our health institutions. The Lord designs that the sanitariums established among Seventh-day Adventists shall be symbols of what can be done for the world, types of the saving power of the truths of the gospel. They are to be agencies in the fulfillment of God's great purposes for the human race. 
to God's people and His institutions in this generation, as well as to ancient Israel, belong the words written by Moses through the Spirit of Inspiration. Thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great, that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Even these words fail of reaching the greatness and the glory of God's purpose to be accomplished through His people. The Highest Aim Sanitariums are needed, in which successful medical and surgical work can be done. Those institutions, conducted in accordance with the will of God, would remove prejudice and call our work into favorable notice. The highest aim of the workers in these institutions is to be the spiritual health to the patients. Successful evangelistic work can be done in connection with medical missionary work. It is as these lines of work are united that we may expect to gather the most precious fruit for the Lord. Memorials for God Our sanitariums in all their departments should be memorials for God, His instrumentalities for sowing the seeds of truth in human hearts. This they will be if rightly conducted. To Reform Medical Practices as to drugs being used in our institutions, it is contrary to the light which the Lord has been pleased to give. The drugging business has done more harm to our world and killed more than it has helped or cured. The light was first given to me why institutions should be established, that is, sanitariums were to reform the medical practices of physicians. An Honor to God the God of heaven is honored by an institution managed in this way. The blank sanitarium was established in the order of God, that men and women might better understand the virtues of the tree of life. In His mercy, God has made the sanitarium such a power in the relief of physical suffering that thousands are drawn to it to be cured of their maladies, and very often they are not only cured physically, but from the Savior they receive the forgiveness of their sins, and they identify themselves completely with Christ, with His interests, His honor. Their sins are taken away and are placed at Christ's account. His righteousness is imputed to them. The healing balm is applied to the soul. They receive the grace of Christ and go forth to impart to others the light of truth. The Lord makes them His witnesses. Their testimony is, He was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. They never forget the prayers, the songs of praise and thanksgiving that they heard while at the sanitarium. Can we realize how much God is glorified by this work? To lift up Christ. The purpose of our health institutions is not first and foremost to be that of hospitals. The health institutions connected with the closing work of the gospel in the earth stand for the great principles of the gospel in all its fullness. Christ is the one to be revealed in all the institutions connected with the closing work, but none of them can do it so fully as the health institution where the sick and suffering come for relief and deliverance from both physical and spiritual ailment. Many of these need, like the paralytic of old, the forgiveness of sin, the first thing, and they need to learn how to go and sin no more. 
If a sanitarium connected with this closing message fails to lift up Christ and the principles of the gospel as developed in the third angel's message, it fails in its most important feature and contradicts the very object of its existence. Christ to bring relief and healing. I have been instructed that we should lead the sick in our institutions to expect large things because of the faith of the physician and the great healer who, in the years of his earthly ministry, went through the towns and villages of the land and healed all who came to him. None were turned empty away. He healed them all. Let the sick realize that, although unseen, Christ is present to bring relief and healing. To awaken faith in the great healer. As Christ's followers, we are to work with all rational methods to preach the gospel of present truth. Not only by words, but by deeds, we are to give evidence that Christ is willing to unite with his devoted ministers today in healing the sick and suffering. The Lord would revive in the minds of His workers a living faith in His power. When we increase in the faith of the gospel of Christ and encourage that faith as it is presented in the Word of God, there will be in our sanitariums not only a practical knowledge of how to treat the sick upon right principles, but the manifestation of a living faith in God that will lead the workers to call upon the great physician for divine assistance and the Lord will come to the help of such in response to their faith in His power. Because we have sanitariums for the healing of the sick, we are not to cease to call upon the great healer. When we are urged to establish sanitariums, it is not that we may depend alone upon the simple remedies used, but that we may point the afflicted ones to the mighty healer of disease. We are to plead for His power to work in harmony with our medical ministrations. The work of our sanitariums would be far more successful if the physicians would read the Word more earnestly and put its precepts into practice, if they would preach the kingdom of God and pray for the healing grace of Christ to come upon the afflicted. Let us present the gospel to the sick connecting Jesus, the great healer, with the simple remedies used, and our living faith will be answered. But those who come to the great healer must be willing to do his will, to humble their souls and confess their sins. As we lay hold of divine power with a faith that will not be denied, we shall see the salvation of God. Christ declared that He came to recover men's lives. This work is to be done by Christ's followers, and it is to be done by the most simple means. Families are to be taught how to care for the sick. The hope of the gospel is to be revived in the hearts of men and women. We must seek to draw them to the great healer. In the work of healing, let the physicians work intelligently not with drugs, but by following rational methods. Then let them by the prayer of faith draw upon the power of God to stay the progress of disease. This will inspire in the suffering ones belief in Christ and the power of prayer, and it will give them confidence in our simple methods of treating disease. Such work will be a means of directing minds to the truth and will be of great efficiency in the work of the gospel ministry.